Well, every now and again, a book comes along that has power and wisdom to speak to the best part of us, to wake us up to the life we could be leading. Well, The Saint, The Surfer, and The CEO is the latest work from life leadership guru Robin Sharma. It's all about connecting with your true self, and uh, he joins us this morning with The Secret. Robin, good to see you again. Great to see you again, too. Um, tell me, this is such a different approach for you. Does giving insight and advice... Uh, through storytelling because it's really through characters that you give this self-help book to the reader absolutely yeah, I think stories are a great way to, to teach um, I've got two young kids and I always try to sit down and, and make things uh, fun for them you know when we play we learn and so what I try to do in the Saint the Surfer and the CEO is is create a story about three fundamental questions I mean studies have been done on people on their deathbeds they ask three questions number one have I lived wisely number two have I loved well and number three, have I served greatly? And so the saint is really about living a wise life, living an authentic life. The surfer is about how do you get the playfulness back? How do you get the enchantment and the wonder of life back? Because we take life too seriously. And the CEO is about how to really succeed in the world in a true and authentic way. Let's start with the saint then, because you, you call them the final questions. Yes. Do I live wisely? Are, does that mean we should live every day as if it's our last day and ask ourselves every day, or what, what's your main um, procedure in pulling it off? Well, I mean, I think there's the macro question, which is you need to connect with your mortality. Mm -hmm. Most of us live our lives as if we have all the time in the world, and we say, next year I'm going to be a better parent, next year I'm going to find the career that really makes my heart sing, and, and one day we, we find that life ends very quickly. So we, we need to connect with mortality. On the same time, we need to be very practical. And we can be practical by just waking up in the morning, asking ourselves a certain series of questions. In the book, I talk about the power of journaling. There's something almost magical about taking out a blank piece of paper and every morning for about five or ten minutes writing our intentions about what we're going to do today to make today an extraordinary day. You know, you talk about journaling, and so many of the points you want to get across are not new, really. There's lots of self-help books out there. How do you... Um, keep it fresh for yourself as well as for the reader. I'm constantly going deeper and deeper within. I mean, my core philosophy on life is the doorway to success opens inward, not outward. And so pretty well every day I'm trying to try understand the way the world works. I mean, this book is really my interpretation of the way the world works. And fundamentally, I think life is a growth school. That's mm -hmm. the key point, you know. Every single thing that happens to us is part of our destiny. Every adversity, every person we meet, every experience we go through has really come to us to teach us a lesson to advance us along the path of where we're meant to go. Well, you talk about that. I mean, the CEO, who is the career and life coach, if each element is a coach, um, delivers information that certainly could have kept some uh, real-life CEOs out of jail. Uh, if you <laughs> yeah. look at the current state of the business yeah. world or the climate, so give me your thoughts then on, on having a fulfilling employment, but also still being true to yourself. Well, that, that is the key. I mean, I think the, the fundamental thing that every one of us needs to do is live an authentic life. To me, success is defined by a simple question. Are you living your life on your own terms? Are you listening to the gentle whispers of the heart, as I call them in the book? And so it really is a balance between being out in the world and understanding that, you know, we need to do certain things, we need to be responsible, but also doing it in a very authentic way. And there, there's some tools in the book that I talk about. Number one, simply keeping your promises, being impeccable and meticulous with your word. Number two, being more concerned about adding value than making money. And really money, I've learned in my own life, is a byproduct. The more value you can add, the, the greater you can serve greatly the more abundance will naturally flow into your life. Are you surprised at how, I mean, this has turned into an amazing boon for you, the monk who sold his Ferrari, huge, best-selling books. You yourself had this high-powered lawyer um, job. Does it surprise you that there's such an attachment to these books and the knowledge you're delivering? You know, I'm surprised the way my life has unfolded, to be really open with you. Um, I, I was a lawyer, and I never imagined that it would unfold like this. Did you and hate your life before? I, I was unhappy. I was, I was empty walking to work. I was not fulfilled. Um, I couldn't imagine that this is what I was meant to do in my life uh, when I was practicing law. And the more I went within, the more I started to get some of these big answers that I talk about in the book, um, the more things just started presenting themselves to me and doors started opening up. 
And so um, I am surprised the way it's all unfolded for me, but I'm not surprised that people are looking for this kind of material because people are hungry, people are searching, people are saying, why am I here? Why do I go through crisis? Why is there pain? Why, is, why did a relationship turn out like this? Or why did a career choice lead me down this path? And we're all struggling, myself included, trying to understand these questions. And so there's a huge appetite for knowledge and, and guidance on, on what it means to live an extraordinary life. Well, I mean, you now have an extraordinary life through, as I say, best-selling author. How does it change, and, and is it hard to stay humble when people love your work? I think if you don't stay humble, or if one doesn't stay humble, life will send you certain lessons to ensure that you stay humble. So I, I try to work at it on a daily basis, through my journaling, through my meditation, through the people I surround myself with, even the, the power of conversation, which really is a tool that deepens us. I try, to, I try to stay grounded on, on why I'm here, and ultimately it's to make a difference. Uh, it's to fulfill my own heart's desires, my own authentic self, and, and I hope I never get to a stage where I, I lose sight of what's most important. You have a line in the book which, uh, our imperfection gives meaning to our lives. The saint says that. Um, do, do you think people sometimes try too hard to be perfect and then that stops them? I, I think society teaches us we almost need to be perfect. And if we would just realize that, you know, every flaw that we have, everything that irritates us about other people is really a doorway into ourselves. And so rather than pointing the finger and saying it's because of my wife or my husband or my boss that I'm unhappy, you know, and look and say, what within me was just irritated? Why would I see the world as I just saw it? And start doing the deep patient reflection to go back and find out perhaps what the ancient wound that was stepped on is all about, what? that's when your life changes. What about those people then who are trapped by their own imperfections, who can't see beyond them? I think ultimately it's choices, you know, and, and we have a choice. We can either go through life, um, you know, asleep to life and letting life act on us, and then one day we wake up on our deathbed and like George Bernard Shaw said, we say, you know, what could have been? Or we really live our life like the saint, the surfer, and the CEO, which is, we live it wisely, we open up our hearts, and we serve greatly. And in doing so, I believe an almost magical unfolding will occur. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a really easy, fun read that also gives you just so much um, information about, as you say, leading a better life, a fuller life. Thank you, Robin, so much for being on the show this morning. Thanks for having me. It's been great to be here. And again, it is called The Saint, The Surfer, and The CEO. And we will be back on Canada AM. I, I love uh, also the title. Yeah, it just it just flowed to me, you know, and it, I think it kind of captures it if we could live our lives like those.